and I think that you mentioned this in our last interview, but the fact that he let you say your name during that segment and then he turned it into the it doesn't matter, that's so good. I, I think back now, um, I'm, I'm kind of in that reflective point of my life now because I know for a fact that my wrestling career is over. There is nothing that could make me go back and do that. So now you get into a reflective state. Nothing. And nothing. Nothing. I, when people say that in wrestling, then they end up showing up a few years later. Yeah, but it's usually people that their lives are wrestling. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, that, that's what they aspire to be. That's not who I aspire to be. I got lucky. Um, and then there were things that happened in the last five years that make me not want to go back. You know, I was 100% loyal to that company and to, to Vince. So when things happen, sometimes you got to draw a line in the sand and say, I can't be treated that way. Mm. and still go back and be loyal to that company. It's not like they need me anyway. They're not crying over spilt milk, but I like to think I treat people a certain way, mm -hmm. and I want to be treated that way. Um, so, yeah, I, w I would never go back. So I reflect now, and when I think about the, the cool things that people have done for me when I was in the WWE, whether it's fans, wrestlers, whatever, um, that may, might still be the coolest thing. <laughs> And it was my very first night on the air. I'd already been there for a few months. But yeah. the first time for him to do that um, was still such a cool thing. And, and I have people that will send it to me every now and then on Instagram or whatever. But it's completely unselfish, um, which a lot of people – I hate when people say, oh, The Rock was selfish back then. Everybody had to be selfish back then. People don't understand. They look at what it is now. You hear this all the time. The best time of wrestling was the Attitude Era. It was 2000 to 2004 because you had – imagine having 15 LeBron James mm. and then your NBA Finals or your Super Bowl is only two guys and you got 15 guys that can be in that spot. Well, that's what you aspire to be. Yeah. You're talking about a million-dollar bonus to be in the main event at WrestleMania. Would you be unselfish? Or, I mean, would you be selfish? Yeah. 100% you would be. So when I hear that narrative about The Rock was selfish back in the day, you would be too. Stone Cold was selfish. Triple H was selfish. Undertaker was selfish. Shawn Michaels was selfish. Mick Foley was selfish. They had to be because everybody fought to get in that spot. If more people and wrestlers fought today to get in that spot, I think we'd have better storylines. We'd have more competition. We'd have better promos. We'd have quicker whatever. It seems like the element of surprise is not there anymore in pro wrestling. And it's funny because if we're going to go see a Marvel movie and you're seeing it on opening night and I'm not seeing it till Sunday, I'm going, Coach, don't tell me a thing. Don't tell me a thing. But if someone might possibly make a big return or a big appearance in wrestling, we're scrolling through Twitter and trying to figure out, are they going to be there or not? A couple weeks ago, you remember when Rock came back at, mm. at Colorado? And it, it's so funny. It was so funny to me to see the negativity surrounding Coach Prime and Colorado and all of that. But when you really step back and you look at all of that, how can it be anything but negative? You had College Game Day. You also had the Fox show there as well. The Rock shows up to be the guest picker. And yet, because they just ignored SmackDown, which happened to be in the same city, Rock comes out and the place absolutely loses their mind. Yeah. It made me think of years ago in San Diego, and I've told this story on, on your show, with me and Eugene, and The Rock called the office and said, hey, I'm in L.A., you guys are going to be in San Diego, let's do something. Yeah. Well, one thing that Vince is avid about, and I'll never forget him threatening us in a meeting on one week where, where Linda McMahon and Mick Foley were going to be a big surprise, it leaked onto a dirt sheet, and he literally said, and I quote, you do not want to be in this room if I find out it's you wow. that is talking to the dirt sheets. Wow. And it literally ticked him off so badly because the art of the business, the reason that makes the business so beautiful at times is the surprise. Mm -hmm. So when I go back to San Diego and I'm like, man, The Rock wants to work with us. Mm -hmm. You know, after all these years, he's coming back to work with me and Eugene. And when people watch that, it, it was supposed to be a 12-minute segment. We're, we're practicing backstage because we snuck Rock in in a car with tinted windows. Nobody knew he was there. And, it, you know, it's a 5 o'clock start, so the sun's still out, or 6 o'clock start, whatever. And so the fans were just kind of just barely getting to the show. It was a perfect scenario. Yeah. But when I'm making fun of Eugene, and I said to Rock when we were in the private room, I said, this feels longer than 12 minutes. And if people go back and watch now, it's like 23 minutes. And I'll never forget, he looked at me, and he goes, what have I always taught you? And I said, a lot of things. And he says, I've always taught you that if it's great 
and you know it's great. Mm. There's nothing they can say. Mm. And that's how The Rock always lived. And it probably helped that Triple H had the crossover match that particular night, too, and they were bitter rivals at that point of their careers. But that's always stuck with me, is that if it's great, and what you're doing is great, and you know it's great, there's nothing they can say. Mm. And so we went out there, and it was electric for 23 minutes. And it was one of the first times that I got to talk trash back to him. But as I watched that back, and I've watched it several times over the years, it has helped me in my sports career. Wow. Every time somebody says to me, no, that can't work, I'm like, nope, it can work. I know it's going to be great. Mm. And I believe in that. And, and that's why what I'm doing now is such a success because I know what I'm doing is right and the people I'm working with, it's right. Yeah, The Rock coming back on SmackDown recently could have been a massive rating if they said, The Rock's going to be here tomorrow night on SmackDown. Instead, they made it this huge surprise. It ended up being arguably one of the greatest SmackDowns maybe ever. And then the numbers on social media ended up being huge, which is a huge... That's the number. That, that's the thing. It's the social media. Yeah. What we realize at CBS and the early edge is social media is so important. Yeah. And that's where a lot of ad dollars are at as well. They're hidden. But that's where you get them. And you take those, just like you do on your show so well, and you take little clips and you post them. That was the magic yeah. that I mean, night. Why do you think we're drinking F3 Energy here right there now? There you go. <laughs> Delicious. But they could have said, The Rock's going to be here. Everybody yeah. would have tuned in. But all you'd be doing, because if The Rock was the last segment, all you'd be doing is going, when's The Rock going to show up? When's The Rock going to show up? When's The Rock going to show up? It wouldn't even have been that quiet. Here's what, what used to happen back in the day if people knew or there was a rumor of somebody. So I think that segment was what, L.A. Knight, I think, at SmackDown? It was, it was Pat McAfee. Oh, it was, Pat and, McAfee and, with and, L.A. Knight, no, right? No, with Austin Theory. Austin Theory. Okay, so Austin Theory. So if it would have been leaked, then fans would have been screaming yeah. while they're trying to do their business. Yeah, Rocky, before, Exactly, Rocky. exactly. Yeah. And that's why you don't do it mm. because Vince has always been about the show ahead of the ratings. He's always believed, at least I think, because I was around him a lot, that the show will bring the ratings. Mm. You know? Mm -hmm. And that night, it was the right thing to do. On one-offs, it's not worth a one-off rating to ruin the reaction that you got in the building that night. Yeah. 